Welcome back to Nightline. I pray that uh, you might have been able for just the past couple of minutes to take care of some business, maybe answer some calls, uh, respond to some people. But we want to ask you for about the next half hour to lock in here with us. Listen to what thus saith the Lord. You say, is God going to be speaking? Really, Keith? Really? Are you really expecting God to speak? I most definitely am. Not because of me, but rather in spite of me, because of His Word. We're going to open up the Word of God in just a minute. And we're really and truly going to look at a word from the Word of God. Our scripture this evening has been from Isaiah 41, 13 where uh, the prophet Isaiah said, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do you remember at the first of the program before we were able to get into that interview with Pastor Anthony R. Wilson that we pointed out when the I am says, I will, he does. You can count on him. God tonight is faithful to help those who not only uh, can't help themselves, but for those who are desiring for him to help them. It's one thing to not just be able to, to help yourself, but it's another thing to say, God, help me. I plead with you tonight, call on the Lord as a lost person and he'll save you. But as a saved person tonight, you may very well need to be helped. Trust the Lord to help you tonight. We're going to go even now uh, to some more music. Now we're going to listen to Sharon Rochelle. And Sharon's going to sing a song tonight entitled, Where I Want to Be. All right, we talked about landing the plane in the presence of God. And we are here with you, Lord, in your presence. And this is where we want to be. Some folks get excited to be at a baseball game, and it might make others happy if everybody knows their name. But as for me, it's a little different. Being with Jesus is my thing, and that makes me happy. Sun. But here's the truth, nothing really satisfies like being alone with him. Here's my secret place, I'm dwelling here always. If you agree, shout this out. Stay in your presence. 
distracted. Draw me back to you. Bring me back to you. Everybody shout it out. Oh, 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 oh. this is where I want to be. Oh, oh, oh. If tonight I were to ask you, what are your plans for the weekend? Or maybe what are your plans for the summer? Or maybe if I were to ask you this, what are your plans for the rest of your life? What would your answer be? You see, it's important to have plans. It's important to make plans. Someone said, and, and rightly so, that no one plans to fail. They just simply fail to plan. Uh, tonight, there's something more important than just simply having plans. And that is including God in your plans. That's what I want to talk about tonight for just a few minutes and in so doing, I'd like to read from James chapter 4, James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. The Apostle James, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, wrote to the Christians in his day, and he said, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow... We will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you're boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. The most foolish thing that a person can do is to behave as if they were never, ever, ever going to be a tomorrow. But there is one thing, by and large, that is even more foolish than that. And that is to behave and carry out the enterprises and the interest of your life as if you would never, ever, ever have to stand before God. You see, if we've ever lived in a day and an hour where there is a prevalent attitude that says, this is my life and I can do with it whatever I want to do, that time is now. Now, we saw this kind of come into being back in the early 50s. And I don't know what it was about that particular time that uh, we seem to see rebellion begin to peak and then we saw it begin to thrive even in the 60s. It was around that same time that the great Christian theologian and preacher, a man by the name of A.W. Tozer, 
describes those who have all kind of energy and all kind of ideas, but yet no regard for God and the things of God. And I quote, I quote, this is A.W. Tozer, not Keith Kelly. He said, they act like idiots. That's pretty strong preaching. That's pretty strong language, I would say, to act like an idiot, quote, end quote. But you know what? A.W. Tozer had a point. To act as if there is no tomorrow and to act as if there is no God is to become deceived by the devil and to become literally one of the enemy's idiots. Now, subtitle to this thought tonight is how to keep from becoming an idiot for the devil. Number one, respond to the invitation of the Spirit of God. I want you to look at what the Word of God says in James 4, 13. This is the verse that we read just moments ago. Did you catch what he said there when he says, Come now. Come now. Of course, this is James writing to the Jewish Christians to come now. Pay attention. Listen to what I've got to say to you because it has come from God. But I believe that it is applicable to those of you who need to be saved. Come to Christ now because now is the accepted time and today is the day of salvation I believe that the word of the Lord would say to those of you who are saved but you're struggling tonight and you're struggling badly and you're living a defeated Christian life even if there is such a thing. He's saying, come now. The word of God says, come now, you who say. There's not only the need to respond to the invitation, but there's a need to reflect upon our conversation. In other words, listen to what it is that we're saying, not only with our lips, but also with our lives. The Word of God says, Come now, you who say. You see, it's important what you say. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, The mouth speaks. There's power in the tongue. There's power of life. There's power of death. All in what comes out of our mouth. You who say, the word of God says, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. In other words, you better watch out. I had better be careful my own self. I'm not just preaching to you tonight, but I'm preaching to my own self. I'm preaching to Keith Kelly in reality, and you just happen to be listening in. We better be careful in getting all caught up and all wrought up in saying what we're going to do. Because in reality, we might not get to do it. And beyond the reality of might not being able to do it, it might not be what God is going to allow us to do. You see, this is really, 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 really unpopular preaching, but I believe it's Bible. God is still a sovereign God who has the final word regardless of whatever it is that you have heard God still can open doors that no man can close but the other side of that coin is God can close doors that no man can open you say well Keith is it is it wrong 
to say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. You see, this is dealing not so much with our mouth, but this is dealing with our mind. And the two are so interconnected. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And some of you tonight have thoughts that you're going to do this. You have thoughts that you're going to do that. And you're even bold enough and brazen enough to brag about what you're going to do. You see, we need to reflect upon our conversation. But we need to readily accept the realization. Because the Word of God says, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. You do not know what will happen tomorrow. Some people would say that that bothers them. Some people would say that that troubles them. That God, if He really loved us, would let us know what was going to happen tomorrow. I want to take the opposing view to that mindset. I think it's because God loves us that He doesn't let us know what's going to happen tomorrow. If I knew what was going to happen tomorrow, there's a very great, great, great chance that I wouldn't be here tonight. If I knew what was going to happen by the end of the summer, uh, who knows what it would do to our, our mind? Who knows what it would do to our psyche? You see, we don't have to know what's going to happen, but we can rejoice in knowing that God is still on the throne and that the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. We need to readily accept the realization that there's one life to live and it'll soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ is going to last. But we need to not only readily accept that realization, but we need to review personally this illustration. There's an illustration given following the investigation stated. The investigation is this, for what is your life? May I ask you that question tonight? What is your life? Not the life of your husband or your wife, your son or your daughter, your mom or your dad, your pastor, your church, your boss, your supervisor, your, your colleagues, your cohorts, your classmates. But what, pray tell me, is your life? Could you tell me that tonight? Well, there's an illustration given that we need to review personally when he says in verse 14, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. One translation says that our life is like a mist, like a mist above a body of water in the morning. In our part of the country, we're just minutes literally away from some of the finest lakes. I think about Lake Kiwi, I think about uh, Joe Cassie, I think about Lake Hartwell, I think about Lake Greenwood, some of these lakes around, I think about Lake Robinson, I think about Lake Cunningham, Lake Cooley. I think about other lakes where in just a matter of minutes you could be there in your car. And if you go there in the morning time, bright and early, right around sunset, you can see the mist above the water. But you see, it's not there long. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hear what I'm telling you tonight. It appears for a little while, just like Lake Bowen up in, in Spartanburg County. A beautiful, beautiful lake, but that mist that that hovers over the water early in the day, it's there for just a brief, 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 brief time. 
And then the Bible says that it vanishes away. That's the way our lives are. Now, most of us don't give a whole lot of thought to the fact that whoever we are, wherever we serve, wherever we work, whatever we do, we're just interims. In other words, we're just temporary. One day, I'm going to leave the church that I pastor. I've, I've been there by the grace of God for almost 17 years. But one day I will cease to be the pastor. One day I'm not going to be with my wife anymore. You say, Keith, are you leaving her? No, I'm not leaving her. You say, is she leaving you? Listen, if Deb Kelly were to tell me that she was, was leaving me and she just had to go, I want to tell you what I'd do. I'd pack my bags and I'd go with her. But in reality, one day I'm going to have to leave her. She's going to have to leave me, not by choice, but by course of nature. None of us were put here to stay. And we need to remember that in living our lives. We need to live not necessarily with a sense of emergency, because that brings panic. But we need to live with a sense of Urgency that brings peace. The Word of God says that we should ponder the passing of time because the Bible says it appears for a little time and then vanishes away. But we need to not only review personally this illustration but we need to repair quickly the underestimation. We have underestimated God's ability to do in our lives that which is exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think. The Word of God says that we ought to say. We ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. You see, if God doesn't permit it, I don't need to plan on it. And while none of us have some kind of monopoly on the will of God, it ought to be the passion and the priority of our life for God to have a monopoly on our life. And I need to pray every day of my life. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I want to be dead, square, centered in the will of God. I want to desire the will of God. I want to do the will of God as it is pleasing unto Him. And while a lot of times there are some really, really good things as far as we're concerned that we want to do, but they're not the best things that God wants us to do. And oftentimes I think if we'd be honest, we have all been tempted to try to force doors open We've been tempted to try to make things happen, to try to manipulate a situation and then put a big sign on it and say this is the will of God. When in reality, it is not the will of God, but it's really and truly what we wanted to do. The Bible said that should not be. We ought to rather say if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. Some of you tonight need to see that the only reason you're alive is because of the will of God. Some of you need to see tonight that the only reason you're able to do this is because of the will of God. But somebody tonight who has 
come down to the end of your way as far as you can tell. But you're still here. And God's not finished with you. He's got or that waiting for you to do. I would just say to you, trust Him to do with you what only He is able to do. Repair quickly that underestimation of the ability of God to do for you what only He can do. And then I would say finally, if we want to not become an idiot for the devil, if we want to include God in our plans, we need to repent immediately of the misappropriation of this amazing gift which God has given us all called time. You see, we get all caught up in time. We get overwhelmed with time. We get blinded by time. But it is more that God wants us to understand timing is important, just as important, and I would even say more important than time. You see, it's by divine timing that God tonight meant for you to hear this word. And the Bible goes on to say, don't brag about anything except the grace of God upon your life. And the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, where Christ died, was buried and rose again so that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. What is it talking about in context? It's talking about not including God in your plans. Inspect your life from a divine perspective. Invite the Lord to be Lord over all areas in your life and involve Him in the process. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that God would bless you and keep you Make his face to shine upon you, show grace to you, and give peace to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you, and good night.